This is Chapter Four of Alonzo Fitz and Other Stories. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Alonzo Fitz and Other Stories by Mark Twain. Chapter Four, Punch Brothers Punch. Will the reader please to cast his eye over the following lines and see if he can discover anything harmful in them? Conductor, when you receive a fare, punch in the presence of the passenger. A blue trip slip for an eight cent fare, a buff trip slip for a six cent fare, a pink trip slip for a three cent fare. Punch in the presence of the passenger. Chorus Punch, brothers, punch with care, punch in the presence of the passenger. I came across these jingling rhymes in a newspaper a little while ago and read them a couple of times. They took instant and entire possession of me. All through breakfast they went waltzing through my brain, and when at last I rolled up my napkin, I could not tell whether I had eaten anything or not. I had carefully laid out my day's work the day before, thrilling tragedy in the novel which I am writing. I went to my den to begin my deed of blood. I took up my pen, but all I could get it to say was, punch in the presence of the passenger. I fought hard for an hour, but it was useless. My head kept humming, a blue trip slip for an eight-cent fare, a buff trip slip for a six-cent fare, and so on and so on, without peace or respite. The day's work was ruined. I could see that plainly enough. I gave up and drifted downtown, and presently discovered that my feet were keeping time to that relentless jingle. When I could stand it no longer, I altered my step. But it did no good. Those rhymes accommodated themselves to the new step and went on harassing me just as before. I returned home and suffered all the afternoon. Suffered all through an unconscious and unrefreshing dinner. Suffered and cried and jingled all through the evening. Went to bed and rolled, tossed, and jingled right along, the same as ever got up at midnight frantic and tried to read, but there was nothing visible upon the whirling page except punch, punch in the presence of the passenger. By sunrise I was out of my mind, and everybody marveled and was distressed at the idiotic burden of my ravings. Punch, oh, punch, punch in the presence of the passenger. Two days later, on Saturday morning, I arose, a tottering wreck and went forth to fulfill an engagement with a valued friend, the Reverend Mr. Blank, 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 to walk to the Talcott Tower ten miles distant. He stared at me, but asked no questions. We started. Mr. Blank, Blank, Blank talked, 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 as is his wont. I said nothing. I heard nothing. At the end of a mile, Mr. Blank, Blank, Blank said, "'Mark, are you sick?' I never saw a man look so haggard and worn and absent-minded. Say something, do. Drearily, without enthusiasm, I said, Punch, brothers, punch with care. Punch in the presence of the passenger. My friend eyed me blankly, looked perplexed, then said, I do not think I get your drift, Mark. There does not seem to be any relevancy in what you have said. Certainly nothing sad. And yet— Maybe it was the way you said the words. I never heard anything that sounded so pathetic. What is— But I heard no more. I was already far away with my pitiless heart-breaking blue trip slip for an eight-cent fare, buff trip slip for a six-cent fare, pink trip slip for a three-cent fare, punch in the presence of the passenger. I do not know what occurred during the other nine miles. However, all of a sudden, Mr. Blank, Blank, Blank laid his hand on my shoulder and shouted, Oh, wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Don't sleep all day! Here we are at the tower, man. I have talked myself deaf and dumb and blind and never got a response. Just look at this magnificent autumn landscape. Look at it! Look at it! Feast your eye on it! You have traveled. You have seen boasted landscapes elsewhere. Come, now, deliver an honest opinion. What do you say to this? I sighed wearily, and murmured, A buff trip slip for a six-cent fare, A pink trip slip for a three-cent fare, Punch in the presence of the passenger. 
Rev. Mr. Blank 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 stood there, very grave, full of concern, apparently, and looked long at me. Then he said, "'Mark, there is something about this that I cannot understand. Those are about the same words you said before. There does not seem to be anything in them, and yet they nearly break my heart when you say them. Punch in the—how uh, is it they go?' I began at the beginning and repeated all the lines. My friend's face lighted with interest. He said, "'Why, what a captivating jingle it is! It is almost music. It flows along so nicely. I have nearly caught the rhymes myself. Say them over just once more, and then I'll have them sure.' I said them over. Then Mr. Blank 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 said them. He made one little mistake, which I corrected. The next time, and the next, he got them right.' now a great burden seemed to tumble from my shoulders that torturing jingle departed out of my brain and a grateful sense of rest and peace descended upon me i was light-hearted enough to sing and i did sing for half an hour straight along as we went jogging homeward then my freed tongue found blessed speech again and the pent talk of many a weary hour began to gush and flow it flowed on and on joyously jubilantly until the fountain was empty and dry as i wrung my friend's hand at parting i said haven't we had a royal good time but now i remember you haven't said a word for two hours come come out with something the rev mr blank 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 turned a lack-lustre eye upon me drew a deep sigh and said without animation without apparent consciousness punch brothers punch with care punch in the presence of the passenger a pang shot through me as i said to myself poor fellow poor fellow he has got it now i did not see mr blank 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 for two or three days after that then on tuesday evening he staggered into my presence and sank dejectedly into a seat he was pale worn he was a wreck he lifted his faded eyes to my face and said ah mark it was a ruinous investment that i made in those heartless rhymes they have ridden me like a nightmare day and night hour after hour to this very moment since i saw you i have suffered the torments of the lost saturday evening i had a sudden call by telegraph and took the night train for boston the occasion was the death of a valued old friend who had requested that i should preach his funeral sermon i took my seat in the cars and set myself to framing the discourse but i never got beyond the opening paragraph for then the train started and the car wheels began their clack 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 and right away those odious rhymes fitted themselves to that accompaniment for an hour i sat there and set a syllable of those rhymes to every separate and distinct clack the car wheels made why I was as fagged out then as if I had been chopping wood all day. My skull was splitting with headache. It seemed to me that I must go mad if I sat there any longer. So I undressed and went to bed. I stretched myself out in my berth, and—well, you know what the result was. The thing went right along just the same. Clack, 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 a blue trip slip. Clack, 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 for an eight-cent fare clack 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 a buff trip slip clack 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 for a six cent fare and so on and so on and so on punch in the presence of the passenger sleep <laughs> not a single wink i was almost a lunatic when i got to boston don't ask me about the funeral i did the best i could but every solemn individual sentence was meshed and tangled and woven in and out with punch brothers punch with care punch in the presence of the passenger and the most distressing thing was that my delivery dropped into the undulating rhythm of those pulsing rhymes and i could actually catch absent-minded people nodding time to the swing of it with their stupid heads and mark you may believe it or not but before i got through the entire assemblage were placidly bobbing their heads in solemn unison mourners undertaker and all the moment i had finished i fled to the ante-room in a state bordering on frenzy of course 
it would be my luck to find a sorrowing and aged maiden aunt of the deceased there who had arrived from springfield too late to get into the church she began to sob and said oh oh he is gone he is gone and i didn't see him before he died yes i said he is gone he is gone he is gone oh will this suffering never cease you loved him then oh you too loved him loved him loved who why my poor george my poor nephew oh him yeah yes oh yes yes certainly certainly punch punch oh this misery will kill me bless you bless you sir for these sweet words i too suffer in this dear loss were you present during his last moments yes i uh, whose last moments his the dear departed's yes oh yes 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 i suppose so i think so i don't know oh certainly i, I was there i was there oh what a privilege what a precious privilege and his last words oh tell me tell me his last words what did he say he said he said oh my head my head my head he said he said he never said anything but punch 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 in the presence of the passenger oh leave me madam in the name of all that is generous leave me to my madness my misery my despair a buff trip slip for a six cent fare a pink trip slip for a three cent fare endure rents can no further go punch in the presence of the passenger my friend's hopeless eyes rested upon mine a pregnant minute and then he said impressively mark you do not say anything you do not offer me any hope but ah uh, me it is just as well it is just as well you could not do me any good the time has long gone by when words could comfort me something tells me that my tongue is doomed to wag forever to the jigger of that remorseless jingle there there it is coming on me again a blue trip slip for an eight cent fare a buff trip slip for thus murmuring faint and fainter my friend sank into a peaceful trance and forgot his sufferings in a blessed respite. How did I finally save him from an asylum? I took him to a neighboring university and made him discharge the burden of his persecuting rhymes into the eager ears of the poor, unthinking students. How is it with them now? The result is too sad to tell. Why did I write this article? It was for a worthy, even a noble purpose. It was to warn you, reader, if you should come across those merciless rhymes, to avoid them, avoid them as you would a pestilence. End of chapter 4